today. It seems to be kind of a tentative market, certainly one that is uh, indicated by light volume. Here at the big board, we've had about 170 thousand or excuse me 170 million shares change hands so far this morning again the day after christmas is typically a fairly calm one or i should say light trading day for the markets although sometimes light volume means increased volatility but what we are seeing today is strength in energy stocks but a mixed picture in the financials we're seeing gains in some of the regional banking stocks but um, a mixed picture for the brokerages as well as some of the asset management stocks they're under a little bit of pressure today computers are also mixed if you take a look at some of the components of the big board. IBM is on the downside, but we are seeing some strength in Compaq, for example. Let's take a look at some of the stocks in the news today. Of course, retailers have been talked about quite frequently over the past couple of weeks, as often is the case during the holiday shopping season, because this is the time of year when they generate a good a majority of their sales, or a good deal of their sales, I should say, actually. Federated Department Stores, which operated, operates Bloomingdale's, among other stores, said that it came out to see its December comps are going to be up only about 1 to 2 percent, and that is below its target of an increase of 3% for its same store sales for the month of December. What Federated said is that it saw some weak sales during the second and third week of December. And while the weekend ahead of Christmas was showed some strong sales, it wasn't enough to make up for the weaker weeks prior to Christmas, so it's under pressure. I did say there is one group showing strength across the board, that being energy, as um, indicated by the oil services index today. Um, they are higher energy stocks, oil services stocks, as well as drug stocks, showing some strength in today's session. So that's what's happening here at the big board. Liz and Tyler, back to you. Mary, thank you so much. We'll be checking back in with you throughout the day. Let's get right to all of the market numbers. And we do see the Dow Jones Industrials better by nine points. Not bad, considering it was in negative territory earlier this morning. As we continue, we'll look at all of the numbers. The transports are to the plus side, I believe, and uh, that's, let me make sure about that. Hold on, check, and yet yeah, transports to the downside, rather, down 23 and a quarter. The utilities are to the plus side by almost seven points. Moving on to the big board composite, it is to the downside by, four, that's the NASDAQ, rather, down by 14 at 2,503. The most active issue on the NASDAQ is JDS Uniphase, down a fraction at $40.00. And uh, that, of course, having much to do with the fact that it was downgraded by Deutsche Bank Alex Brown. S&P 500 up five and a half. The Russell 2000 up about two thirds. The Amex better by seven and a half. As for the Wilshire Total Market Index, giving us a, an indication of how all stocks are doing, right on the money there, up 39. So nothing really dramatic to the plus side at 12,021. And your 10-year and 30-year T-bonds are to the downside. The 10-year yield is at 5.03 percent. 30-year Treasury yield at 5.40 percent. Now let's get an update on the morning's other top stories with Amy Atkins. CNBC News Update, brought to you by CyberCorp.com. Good morning, everybody. Ground control in Russia is back in contact with the space station Mir. They were out of touch for about 20 hours. Russian officials blame the problem on batteries that inexplicably discharged. The batteries are being recharged and will be at full capacity tomorrow. In China, 309 people are dead after a fire roared through a shopping mall. Most of the casualties were partygoers trapped in a disco on the fourth floor. Investigators say construction work in the basement may have caused the fire. President Clinton is giving the peace process a nudge. He's given the Palestinians and the Israelis until tomorrow to agree to a deal. The compromise would give both sides a piece of Jerusalem, with most of East Jerusalem and the Old City going to the Palestinians. Clinton's proposal and deadline comes after five days of Mideast talks in Washington. And Tom Hanks topped Mel Gibson and Nicolas Cage at the box office this weekend. Hanks' movie Castaway sank the competition at the box office, taking in an estimated $40.5 million. Castaway was followed by Gibson's What Women Want and The Family Man, starring Cage. That's a look at the morning's top stories. Straight ahead, your morning weather with Joe Witte. Be formless, shapeless. Now you put water into a cup. It becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow or it can crash. Adapt to the market. Trade through nine ECNs and over 450 market makers. CyberCore Direct Access Broker. Designed to seek and execute the best available price. Be water, my friend. 
Joe Whitty now with the morning's weather. Joe. Oh, it's a nasty day in the southern plain states. Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas. We've got a major ice storm that's been going on since Sunday night. And some places in northwestern Arkansas have two inches of just plain old solid ice. A lot of power lines down. And this is a major mess for the folks going through the uh, Texas, uh, say, Oklahoma City, Dallas, to through Little Rock, Little Rock, Arkansas. South of that, it's plain old rain, and over the next three days, they'll pick up quite a bit of rain in southern Texas. But big store, the major problem is going to be the ice that's going to cause all sorts of travel problems and power line problems. Oklahoma City, 22 degrees, Dallas just above the freezing mark, and Little Rock at 28 below the freezing mark, and St. Louis with a couple of inches of snow in the forecast. Right now, very cold in the teens. Chicago land, some light flurries later on today as this cool front drops down from the north. Here in the northeast, we're uh, sunny, but we're windy also. That 30 feeling more like about 15 because of the wind chill. We've got Orlando topping off with a somewhat sunny 68 later this afternoon. And off to the west, Denver 39. A little bit of rain shower activity in the northwest, but hey, it's wintertime, isn't it? And finally, Miami. Why go to Miami this time of the year? Here's one reason why. Sunny in 73 later on this afternoon. Liz, Tyler? Sounds pretty good to me. Sound good. Oh, don't have to wear a coat. Up next on Taking Stock, out of all of the stores bargain hunters are visiting today, which retailer does our next guest see as a top pick? We will find out from David Speaker, Portfolio Manager with Bank of America Capital. He will take your calls, 1-800-800-CNBC. the scenes market information with eSignal, the number one provider of real-time market data. With the most reliable service and direct connections to the exchanges, eSignal lets you trade with confidence. With quotes, charts, news, and free NASDAQ Level 2, eSignal can pay for itself in just one or two trades. And the new eSignal market scanners let you scan the entire market in real time to find just the stocks you should be trading today. If you're serious about making money, you need eSignal. Call now, 1-800-200-6727. What's the problem, Lacey? We're running out of plastics for that cell phone contract. Okay, Miller, squeeze your suppliers. Costello, see if our Tokyo plant has any. Harmon, are you listening? No, sir. I I'm getting 10 tons of plastic delivered tomorrow. GE Polymer Land, the 24-7 global website that can solve plastic problems instantly. Order today, take delivery right away. Thank you, Lacey, for hiring Harmon. GE Polymer Land. Are you intimidated by the stock market? Afraid to even get started? Hi everybody, I'm Susie Orman. Join me on New Year's Day right here on CNBC Live for two hours of financial information and advice. Susie Orman's Guide for New Investors. Live New Year's Day at noon and 6 p.m. Eastern. Part of CNBC's new Investor Day special. Among our top stories this morning, the markets. Folks hoping that we would see a sustained rally picking up where Friday left off. Not happening too dramatically. The Dow is up 27, but the Nasdaq down 4. Federated Department Store says it sees December same-store sales coming in below plan, up only 1 to 2 percent for the month, as opposed to the company's original expectations of 3 percent. Natural gas pipeline operator Williams Company says it expects fourth quarter earnings to, quote, substantially exceed analyst forecasts of 17 cents a share. Time to head over to Tyler now for today's edition of Taking Stock. Thank you very much, Liz. Welcome to Taking Stock. Our guest today expects economic growth to give the markets a lift in the second half of 2001. Got to wait a while. In the short term, he expects at least a 50 basis point, that's one half of one percentage point, reduction in the Fed funds rate. Uh, that to occur during the first quarter of next year. No stranger to CNBC, but new uh, to this edition of Taking Stock. Joining us today, David Spica from St. Louis. Uh, he's portfolio manager with Bank of America Capital Management. David, uh, let's first uh, welcome first, and uh, let's take a look at the stocks you uh, like today. They include Tyco, Home Depot, and Microsoft. Let's drill down on Microsoft. Is that because you expect that the Bush administration is going to do something uh, that is going to help them from the antitrust uh, point? Well, sure. That's that's one of the catalysts we see, Tyler. We we feel like a Republican administration will be 
uh, much better for, for the antitrust suit against Microsoft. The valuation is very cheap here, and the Windows 2000 operating system should prove to be a strong catalyst for the stock. But uh, PC sales are slow. That's true. PC sales are slow, but uh, don't forget that Microsoft also has an internet business through uh, Mic Microsoft Network and is also uh, has developed the, the Windows CE operating system for handheld devices, and we're still seeing accelerating uh, uh, sales trends in the handheld arena. All right. Uh, let's uh, get you uh, on the record for what you think the markets are going to do next year. How high <laughs> can they go? How much lower might they go? Well, we generally expect the market to perform in line with corporate earnings growth next year. We, we don't anticipate a lot of multiple expansion like we've seen in the past few years. So somewhere in the, the 7 to 10 percent range is about what we're predicting for, for S&P 500 corporate earnings. And uh, we'd be comfortable uh, uh, predicting some sort of uh, market return in that range. But you can do better than that, than that with uh, some individual choices. Let's go to Dominic in New York for a question. Dominic, you're on. Dominic? Uh, yes, uh, my wants to know your thoughts on Cisco. Cisco, uh, David. We, Cisco, uh, Cisco's a stock we like. It's down almost, uh, or has been down 50% from, uh, from its year high. Uh, it's uh, still going to benefit greatly from the build out of the internet, and it is by far the leader in the networking industry, not as heavily exposed to telecom carrier spending, so, so we like it here. You own it and would buy more? No question, All definitely. Right. Let's go to Gary in Illinois. Gary, you're up. Yes, happy holidays to you both. Same to you. Same to you. I'd like your outlook on IBM. Okay. Uh, IBM, we're encouraged by their increased uh, uh, representation in the service industry. It's now about 40% of their revenue base. Uh, and we feel like the slowdown in the PC industry is already priced into the stock. So we like it at these levels. We do own it, and we would be buying it here. All right, thanks. Let's go on to Diane in Massachusetts. Diane, you're up. Diana, yeah, are you there? Uh, yes, Go yes. Um, I'm curious about EMC in the short term and then in the long term, uh, what kind of percentage gains or if, if any do you see? Uh, long term, we love EMC. Storage is very hot. As the internet continues to be built out, the storage industry is going to continue to grow and EMC is a leader there. Short term, we're a little bit more cautious because the valuation is still very high. It trades at about 66 times next year's earnings, and it hasn't taken the big hit a lot of technology stocks have, so near term, we'd be somewhat patient on the stock. Got time for just one more. It's Ann's turn from New York. Ann, you're up. Good morning. How are you? AT&T, please. AT&T. AT&T, uh, we feel like, has some significant challenges ahead. They just cut dividends for the first time in their history. They took guidance for the fourth quarter down. Uh, we don't see any real strong near-term catalysts. We don't feel like the breakup is going to provide an, a near-term catalyst of any sort. So at this point, we're not a buyer of AT&T. We'd be very patient there. David Speak of Bank of America Capital Management, thanks very much. Have a good new year. Thank you, Tyler. All righty. You'll have another chance to call in today with your stock questions. It comes at 2.40 Eastern Time, and our guest will be Donald Cox, Chairman and Chief Strategist with Harris Insight Equity Fund. Join us uh, again tomorrow. At uh, this time, when Mark Greenberg will join us live for Taking Stock, straight ahead, winners and losers with Joe Kernan. Come right back.
or not, there is nothing to buy. Call 1-888-383-4000. 1-888-383-4000. Nothing gets by an Oryx. For a look at this hour's winners and losers, we're with Joe Kernan. Did you have a good holiday? I did, thanks. Good, How good, about good. you? Really yeah, good. Really nice. Fun. Uh, first one. She's clueless, but... Oh, the baby? Yeah. Was but, she just showered with presents? Yeah, but there's no room any. I mean, it's like that every Anyway. Day. It is, not today's her birthday. Too, so oh, happy from, birthday thank to you. Blake. Christmas the day after. It's, I see what they mean now, because it's tired. It's hard <laughs> to make a big fuss today, but we're, we're going to try. <laughs> You know, Barron's had some stuff, but, you know, Christmas weekend, sitting around reading Barron's. I read it. I Did know. Did you really? You what would you rather do, that or we stick are needles in your eyes? Anyway, yeah, <laughs> I did look at it, and uh, Noble Affiliates is mentioned positively, and some of these uh, natural gas stocks are doing very, very well today, uh, including Noble. And if you look at some of the other energy companies, um, really across the board, Strength Williams had some positive comments, but you see some of the, uh, the oil service stocks doing well today. Uh, but that's one of the groups that's, that's pretty strong. So is pharmaceuticals, including specialty pharmaceutical companies like Allergan, which is up uh, nearly $4, closing in on a new high, but Force Labs is up, um, Merck is up, Johnson & Johnson's up, a lot of the drug index is up, so we're seeing some movement there. Uh, also, uh, some of these um, ancillary healthcare companies like Cardinal Health, which is up $2.44, and Laboratory Corp of America is up today. Um, actually, not that much, but that's right on a, uh, a new high, but a lot of uh, healthcare stocks doing pretty well, but not Coincidentally, the uh, the HMO is not doing so well today. Also, biotech looks pretty good. Here's Gilead, which is one of the big leaders today, up four dollars, uh, up nearly six percent. I didn't know whether I saw. I don't think I saw any news necessarily on Gilead, but uh, if you look at uh, the gainers list on the uh, uh, on the Nasdaq, you find IDEC in the number two spot. Uh, Myriad in the number four spot, up mm -hmm. about four and a half. Then Gilead, Genzyme, Abgenics, Imclone. So a lot of uh, biotech stocks on that list. Uh, in the number two spot, oh, I'm sorry, in the top spot for point gainers is Polymedica, which we talked about uh, last hour, but I don't think I could. Did I get a chart? It might be this next one I didn't get a chart on. This company raised third quarter uh, estimate to 55 to 56 cents. That's above expectations. Let's see if this crashes the system again. Okay. Liz going to work. All there right. it is. Penteco Energy is being acquired by USX Marathon for $446 million plus, uh, plus some debt. That's $19 a share. Here's what Marathon looks like today. Uh, it's up also. Late Friday, um, Gale Corp said that it would shun this offer from a couple of uh, Dallas investment groups. Uh, an $18 a share offer. It says it's going to vigorously pursue remaining independent. And the stock ran up a little bit earlier in the session on the announcement of, in a 13D filing that the 6% owners of Gale wanted to, uh, to take the company private and then only to now turning back down a day after the company said it would uh, vigorously pursue remaining independent. Uh, I called up and found out it is pronounced Gale, in case okay. you were wondering. Were you wondering about that? I always do. You want to pronounce the companies by the right name. It's a good idea. They you get figure, upset if you don't. This company makes distributes and sells uh, equipment used in light construction, including some skid steer loaders, I think, based in Wisconsin. Skid steer loaders. Skid steer loaders. Well, that's where the best are made. You know they have the wheels uh, in Wisconsin, yeah, right? I yeah. Think. The wheels are in back on those skid steer loaders. Have you ever noticed that? Sure. Be careful driving those. Okay. Finally, uh, AK Steel is down, even though it was already down. It's all the way down to nine. Uh, this company late Friday said fourth quarter revenues and profits would be below the third quarter uh, because it expects average per ton selling prices to drop by uh, by seven percent. By seven percent. I've driven a combine. A combine, really? Is that the right word? Y yeah, I think combine. it is. I think it is. Those are big things. How was Tyler's Christmas? Did he get did he get weepy? He got golf clubs. Did he get weepy at all? Remember how we've said that he doesn't? Yeah, he, I don't think uh, he uh, cried this time. Sensitive. Very so. What did what did your son get? Anything good? Tom? Some uh, neat Nintendo games, some Game Boy games, mm. and uh, several books. A bird calendar, which he's very fond of. Uh huh. Bird, he loves birds. Really? Loves birds. Birdies. Yeah. Yeah. Little kids love those. Well, that's fun, Ty. Good work. You got any money left? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all gone. You, you know, Tyler, why he's asking that. Why? Because he alone. doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't. <laughs> Penelope did very well this she time She did well. Around. Blake did well. Everyone's, right. everyone's Everybody's going. happy. I did well. Well, Joe, what would you be doing if you weren't working today? 
It wasn't worth sleeping. Okay. Well, a lot of people out there would be shopping because there are some terrific bargains everywhere. Straight ahead, we'll take you on a post-Christmas holiday shopping spree live in New York. So don't go away. Counts in a mutual fund. Performance counts. The Kaufman Fund has consistently delivered. Ten-year, five-year, one-year. What counts in a mutual fund? Experience counts. Kaufman Fund managers Lawrence Oriana and Hans Such combine over 70 years of experience. Performance, experience, the Kaufman Fund finding outstanding investment values for the aggressive portion of your portfolio. Call now for your free prospectus. 800-679-7111. only on CNBC. Well, there's a look at uh, New York City and city sidewalks, busy sidewalks, no let up even after Christmas uh, in the shopping parade. In fact, as uh, we've been saying, this week retailers can usually count on ringing up 10, 15, maybe even 20 percent of their overall holiday sales. That's under normal circumstances. Let's find out uh, how the action is shaping up. And Mike Huckman is over there on that side of the river at uh, the Manhattan Mall in New York City. Hi, Mike. What you got? Hi, Tyler. Well, I can tell you that uh, based on my own survey, the crowd is just beginning to pick up here inside the Manhattan Mall. It was actually kind of light up until about 20 minutes ago as New Yorkers begin to come in from the cold in search of some very hot after Christmas sales. Now, according to Barnard's Retail Trend Report, sales so far this month are up 3% over the same period last year, but last year they were up at a clip of nearly double that rate. Kurt Barnard says that sales, of course, as just about everybody knows, were spurred on by discounts, and that, he predicts, obviously is going to show up in retailers' bottom lines. And even though sales were slower this year than last, Bernard says that they are not, in his opinion, at recessionary levels at this point. A couple of bargain hunters, though, that I talked to out here at the mall this morning have mixed reviews about the Christmas sales, or after Christmas sales, I should say, that are available today. Oh, I got sweaters for like $20. I figured I'd see if there were any great bargains to be had. And really, the same bargains that you had before Christmas are available today. Nothing, nothing special. I lost sound. Yes, in fact, retailers are typically uh, doing about 11 to 17 percent of their holiday season sales in the week after Christmas. So given their performance so far this season, this week is especially crucial. Back to you, Liz. Thank you very much. Mike Huckman, have a good time finding some of those bargains, at least what's left. An interesting point that Mike makes about the bargains in that the same ones that we saw beforehand are still there now. That was a trick that the retailers picked up and decided they would start discounting before Christmas Eve and the couple of days before Christmas. So we'll see if that strategy worked for them when we get the retail sales numbers for the month. This is Market Watch on CNBC. A quick check of the market shows that the Dow Jones Industrials are down just a fraction. The Nasdaq weaker by 26, S&P 500 up three and a third. It's about two and a half, three minutes to the top of the hour. Joining us now with a preview of what's coming up in the next hour of Market Watch is our own Ted David. Thank you very much, folks. Coming up in the next hour, we'll get an inside look at this morning's Wall Street action from today's Market Watcher. He's AC Morgan. 
not AC Moore, AC Morgan, senior trader of listed technology stocks at Merrill Lynch. Plus, with shoppers out in force today, can post-Christmas sales give retailers that sorely needed boost for the holiday season? We'll get an outlook from retail uh, consultant. And we'll uh, also, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to keep our eyes on the markets for you. We'll also find out today's winning and losing sectors coming up in Sector Watch. All that and more straight ahead. Keep it here. Closed captioning brought to you by USSearch.com. For pre-employment screening, visit USSearch.com. No two eyes see the same world. No two businesses are identical. And now, one company creates Internet solutions unique to you. Fujitsu. The possibilities are infinite. Before you choose a security company, consider this. Only ADT protects your home and family with three solid guarantees, plus a special fire safety offer. It's the ADT Fire Protection Package. If you move, we'll install a system in your new home free of charge. If you're not happy with your system, ADT will refund the installation cost and monitoring fees. We'll even save you up to 20% on your basic homeowner's insurance. Call now and get an ADT security system installed from $99. And for a limited time, we'll also include a free ADT fire extinguisher. This invaluable home safety device is manufactured by Ansel, the fire safety leader. So get the peace of mind of the ADT fire protection package. Get the power of ADT. 90 minutes into the new trading day. The Dow is up 8. The Nasdaq down 22. S&P's up 4 and a third. We'll take a look at what's going on in the retail sector today. What went on in the retail sector last week. Who bought what and where. We'll try and figure it all out for you. Second hour Market Watch starts right now. Good morning and welcome to our international viewers who join us each day at this time. I'm Ted David. Consuelo is off still shopping. Let's take a look at what's going on on Wall Street right now. We have the markets uh, pretty much treading water. The Dow Industrials, as you can see, not doing much here. Up about 9 points, 10,644. A quick look at what's moving and what's not among the Dow 30. And, um, well, we don't have a heck of a lot of movers here. We've got uh, Citigroup up a point. Uh, ExxonMobil is up a point. JP Morgan is up two and change. Also point gains from Merck and Microsoft today. And uh, the transports are actually down about seven points while the utilities are seeing the bulk of the buying action up eight and a quarter at 411.05. Here's the NYSE composite index up three and a half at 643. The volume 226.7 million shares and perhaps that thin volume will be the hallmark of the session today. A lot of folks taking these days off between Christmas and New Year's. Breath is positive, 14 to 11, 423 stocks are unchanged right now. On we go for a look at new highs and new lows. And these numbers are healthy, 147 new highs, 44 new 52-week lows. Uh, as we stand right now, the Dow uh, will be down, if we were to close right here for the year, about 7% for the year. Uh, the S&P 500, which is at 1311, would be down 11% for the year. The Russell 2000 up fractionally, the Amex up 8.61. Uh, the NASDAQ would be down 38% for the year. The Wilshire Total Market Index up 43 points today, 12,024.59. As for the NASDAQ, um, we need to do, I think, 128 points uh, just to, to close above water here uh, sometime this week. The NASDAQ has to do uh, 128 points higher than where it is now. 
uh, at 2503 or else we will be not only down for the year but probably the worst year since I think uh, 1974. The volume already uh, half a billion shares 250366 but a loss of 13 and two thirds. Carl Quintanilla is at the wall at the Nasdaq market site with the very latest. Good morning Carl. Hey thanks very much Ted. You're right about that figure uh, the Nasdaq. We want to end this year at 2640. Uh, if we don't hit that we'll set a new record for the worst year for the Nasdaq ever. As you mentioned Ted uh, we sit basically where we were about an hour ago. Uh, the market hasn't moved a whole lot but there are some stories going on. Netro for instance uh, the big story uh, maker of our broadband wireless access systems uh, basically coming out in warning about revenue for the fourth quarter. That has really taken the wind out of that stock. Uh, today it's down about 20 percent but it's even hurt some stocks that appeared to have uh, a good start uh, when the opening bell rang this morning. Take a look at Redback intraday. You see that it was higher and uh, stayed that way but uh, really got hurt as news of that Netro news uh, came out and as a result we're seeing basically uh, a mixed market. Names like Sycamore, Sienna, Efficient Networks, all of these names, uh, Juniper, uh, Broadcom, uh, no real direction here. As you can see it's a lot of red, a lot of green uh, and uh, Sycamore really one of the leaders there in terms of volume but uh, Sienna not following through. Juniper was up earlier today uh, losing some ground. Broadcom one of the biggest losers in terms of points over at the Nasdaq. So that's really uh, setting the tone and basically reflects what the overall market is doing right now. If you're looking for a stock that has held on to its gains today take a look at Yahoo which uh, came out this morning and talked about the fact that uh, orders for the holiday season have doubled over the year ago. The stock up about 10 percent or 9 percent right now hasn't really given back uh, some gains. Actually seen some follow through as well from names like Amazon, uh, eBay, Ink to Me, Vertical Net, anything related to online uh, retailing or online commerce. Uh, basically seen some good action today as a result of that Yahoo News. And uh, a few names that are not seeing some follow through from Friday's uh, rally are a lot of these companies. Take a look at Dell, Apple, Sun, IBM. I threw IBM and Hewlett Packard up there just so you can see what's going on over the big board as well. A lot of these names had a good day on Friday as, uh, as, a, result of that, as a result of that broad rally, but today that is not, uh, that is just not continuing as the Nasdaq remains down about 18 points. Really quickly, here's the intraday chart as you can see. Basically, you guys staying below the flat line ever since about 10 a.m. Eastern time, and breadth is pretty negative, about 13 to 20, Ted. So as a result, it's going to be hard to climb out of this, but you never know what happens later on today. As you're right about volume, though, it's very light, only about half a billion shares right now. Ted, back to you. All right, Carl Quintanilla at the Nasdaq market site. Thanks. Here's our stocks editor, Joe Kernan, now with a look at some stocks to watch in today's trading on this Tuesday. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Ted. Uh, we will be talking a little bit of, uh, later about, uh, about retailers. We have a, a kind of a snapshot from one. And in fact, uh, in that discussion later, our guest will not be Dana Telsey uh, today, but uh, we will have uh, a retail analyst on. <laughs> That's the headline for the hour. Um, the, the, um, hey, the, she's uh, perky. <laughs> and she's good. I know. Federated Department Stores, uh, we don't overuse her at all. Uh, Federated Department Stores is down $1.13. This company did say uh, that it sees December comp sales uh, up 1% to 2%, and that is below plan. The, uh, um, the estimate was for a 3% gain in December same-store sales. So we know for a fact that Federated is disappointed. There's been some uh, controversy about whether uh, retailers made up enough in the last couple of days to, uh, to beat uh, last year or to beat or match expectations, at least in the case of uh, Federated, uh, that uh, didn't, uh, they did not. Let's look at Walmart. Let's look at some Dow stocks. What's moving the markets today? Uh, Walmart is down a little bit. It's been uh, uh, kind of going ebbing and flowing up, down, back, forth. Hasn't made much headway, but it is staying above uh, 50. Uh, Merck trading higher today. You heard Ted mention that uh, a lot of the drug stocks are, are doing well. This is right uh, near a new high. Continues to trade, uh, trade pretty well along with the rest of the group. Uh, J.P. Morgan, of course, uh, tracks Chase, but uh, uh, J.P. up a dollar eighty-eight. And Ted mentioned Exxon, Exxon, and a lot of energy stocks doing uh, well today. Across the board, really strength in uh, in energy stocks. And uh, when you talk about the utility average being up eight points, that's a big number. Well, Williams companies. Not everyone remembers that it's not just utilities; it's natural gas companies. Williams sees fourth quarter earnings exceeding the first call estimate of seventeen cents a share, setting uh, better than expected performance of its energy business. Also, Enron is in uh, the utility average, and Enron. Uh, adding to some gains there and run up uh, $3.19 at $84 a share. Uh, in Barron's over the weekend, there was uh, positive comments about the natural gas uh, industry. Um, one uh, small cap manager likes some of those stocks. Check out Apache, which uh, isn't necessarily a small cap, but it's doing really well today. It's trading at an all-time high, I believe. It, it's at least a 52-week high. Let me just see if that's ever been this high in history. I don't I don't believe it has. I think that's an all-time high for Apache. A couple other stories we've mentioned uh, throughout the day. Newport Corp is buying 
privately held Kensington Laboratories in an all-stock deal that the company says will be accretive right away, 10 cents in uh, 2000 and, or 2001 and then 15 cents in 2002. But as it so often happens, if it's a stock deal, uh, I'm sorry, that's 10 cents a share in 2000. Newport sees uh, uh, the buy adding and in 2001, 15 cents, get that exactly right. Uh, but as it happens, uh, sometimes you do see when stock is used to acquire another company, it trades a little bit lower. Finally, uh, Vizex uh, coming out and saying that demand is down a little bit for uh, getting your eyes fixed if you're nearsighted that with, uh, with laser surgery. And you might think that for discretionary spending, it's still pretty expensive uh, to, have, uh, to have your eyes done. And um, we made the point earlier, Ted, that uh, you know, having your eyes done, we're talking about nearsightedness and vision, not the way that you would probably think Pre about presbyopia, it. Presbyopia. Yeah, as opposed to presbycusis. Yes. Instead, is that uh, cosmetic, having your eyes done? No, presbyopia is, uh, is the uh, lack of vision due to old age. Oh, presbycusis okay. is the lack of hearing due I'm to old age. With that. Yeah. And um, blepharoplasty would be the wow. eye surgery. Uh, you are so just a font of, of info. Well, We're talking they, they did hire me as a medical reporter here. Perhaps I would have been better off yeah, maybe so. Maybe all of us would have if you had. Thanks, Joe. Been, right. been a real pleasure. Always nice talking to you, sir. All right. Happy holidays. Yeah, you too. Yeah. The spirit's sure over there with Joe Kernan. <laughs> Kathleen Hayes here to take a look at what's going on in the credit markets. And as if, Ms. Hayes, um, let's, can we get, there we go. As, <laughs> as if uh, the Fed needed any more prodding, the International Strategy and Investment Group, ISI, out today with its weekly economic index. It slipped to its lowest point since 1998, November. Uh, retail index lodged at 20.8, the lowest level in the survey's history. Auto index fell to a two-year low. The uh, bad weather and slowing economy hammering the trucking industry. Other sectors, home builders index slipped to 53.4 from 56.1. And uh, they survey 150 companies across the country. So the theory is... Mr. Greenspan gets his hands on this. Well, Mr. Greenspan, of course, has data that cover the whole economy much broader than what the ISI does. It's very interesting, though, because uh, they've been pounding the table for recession and hard landing. They're definitely in a very negative camp on the economy. And, and of course, this Christmas holiday shopping, it's a big question now. It'll be interesting to see how these things flow out. But, you know, the Christmas holiday is behind us. The New Year's fast approaching. Whatever traders are left in bond land seem to be taking some profits. A temporary, temporary setback in the 30-year bond after a trader allegedly mistakenly entered a big electronic sell order. That's the big excitement so far. Um, no major economic releases to react to, certainly chewing on this information Ted gave us. Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan meeting today with California Governor Gray Davis to discuss that state's energy crisis. The Fed won't comment on the meeting. Apparently, it was Mr. Davis's office that put out the press release on this meeting. Greenspan not scheduled to speak today or any day this week. So if we hear anything about it, it will more likely come from the governor himself. Traders, again, also waiting to see how this holiday sales turned out. Early this morning, I spoke to Kurt Barnard, who publishes a high-profile retail trends report, an old friend of a lot of us here at CNBC. He speaks to about 100 major retailers across the country, and he says it looks like December sales will have risen about 3% this year versus a super hot 7% in December last year. Now, on Friday, October and November, personal spending figures showed the consumer may be on track for a gain of 3 to 3.5% in spending in the fourth quarter. Again, that would suggest moderation, but not recession. A bit of a contest, contrast to what the ISI folks are saying. Uh, durable goods orders on Friday suggested manufacturing is still very weak. That auto sector, again, that they're pointing out. What's on tap for this week? Let's take a look. On Wednesday, the index of leading indicators. On Thursday, new claims for unemployment benefits. Mr. Greenspan has signaled this out as a major labor market indicator. Consumer confidence from the conference board. Existing home sales, a certainly a very interest rate sensitive sector. On Friday, Chicago Purchasing Manager survey that's a gauge of manufacturing in this key Midwest region. Last week on Friday, we saw the final December numbers from the University of Michigan. The biggest one-month drop in consumer sentiment since the 1991 recession. Current level sentiment is still well above recession levels, though. And of course, the question is, does it keep falling? Traders now fully expect the Fed to cut interest rates next month. The market is pricing in a drop of 75 to 100 basis points over the next several months. That's why the entire Treasury curve has rallied so powerfully. As you can see, the yield on the five-year note below 5% today. Levels not seen since early 1990. We'll see how much cutting we get when we get them. Let's take a look at the board, starting with the Fed funds rate. The target now is 
six and a half percent if when it gets cut if it gets cut people are looking for six and a quarter maybe six percent even let's look at the notes and see how they're doing this morning we see a bit of a setback in the three month and the sixth month bill the year bill down fractionally the yield is 534 bond equivalent yield that is to your note down fractionally 513 10-year benchmark down 0.14 the yield is 503 that five-year told you below five percent the old benchmark the 30-year bond down fraction yield is, what, yield is 540. Ted, one more thing. Japan, very weak economic data again overnight. Another reason why people expect the Fed to get off the dime and do something. Have they, have they got any room to lower rates in Japan anymore? Well, they, remember, they did raise rates by a quarter point. So, but, I mean, yeah, so they don't, but they don't have much room. Point, and they've got sales yeah. falling, unemployment rising. You yeah. know, just when you, get too, when you get too gloomy here, think how good it is here, even when things get bad oh. still, right? Say sayonara for now. Kathleen Hayes. Arigato. Yes. The uh, market's having a rough time picking up where they left off on Friday. We'll find out why from our market watch today. He's A.C. Morgan, senior trader of listed technology stocks at Merrill Lynch. Plus, mission accomplished for the Russians. They were, uh, you know, trying to get in touch with Mir for a while. They thought they'd lost it. They're back in touch, and we're back in touch in two minutes. Don't go away. Find out with 10 free issues of Investor's Business Daily. It's not just a newspaper. It's a research tool that filters through 10,000 stocks every day to find the true leaders. Call now for 10 free issues of Investor's Business Daily. A billion dollars. That's how much Oracle saved in one year using its own e-business software. How much will you save? Oracle. Software powers the Internet. Still to come here on Market Watch, uh, well, a look at the Dow, which is currently up five and change. The NASDAQ, however, holding at 2,500 and down about 17. The S&P's up 4.73 back in a moment. New Year's Day is New Investor Day on CNBC, and it's your day to profit. Join Ron and Sana as he dives into the portfolio power of the Dow 30. Then, Tom Toscello takes you behind the scenes at NASDAQ. Plus, Ted David examines global investing and the allure of bonds. New Investor Day, New Year's Day on CNBC. Profit. Celebrate the season in style. CN8 brings you a taste of the holidays. We're sharing the holidays with you and some of our CN8 family. That Cook up some delicious dishes. Get stylish dining tips, plus a few holiday surprises. Who else has Santa in the bathtub? Paul Dillon, Robin Stevens, Arthur Fennell, Grace Hodges, Mary Amoroso, and Lynn Doyle bring you a taste of the holidays. New Year's Eve at 8 p.m. only on CN8. Hi, I'm David Ory. How'd you like to get this $30 car back absolutely free? Call this number now and try my amazingly light, incredibly powerful 8-pound Auric XM. On your carpets, tiles, and even wood floors, this $30 car back is yours. Whether you keep the Auric XL or not, there is nothing to buy. Call 1-888-383-4000. 1-888-383-4000. Nothing gets by an Auric. Everybody's wondering, you know, where the Santa Claus rally, too late for that, but what about a January effect? We're going to find out about that in just a moment. We talk to our market watcher and see what they're buying and what they're selling today on this day after Christmas 2000. In fact, it is now time for an inside look at the markets. Our market watcher today is A.C. Morgan, senior leader, uh, or trader that is, of, uh, he may be a leader too for that matter, of uh, listed technology stocks at Merrill Lynch. He's live on their trading floor. Good morning. Nice to see you. Good morning, Ted. Um, let's talk about volume here. I'm looking on the big board. Volume is, uh, you know, relatively thin here. 254.7 million shares. I assume that will be the uh, the order of the day. Even Nasdaq volume a little bit heavier, but pretty much uh, thinner than usual. Historically, the last two weeks of the year always have a very low volume. Um, and as actually we started today, we had a little bit of a lift on Friday's rally. We had a slow fade this morning. 
And as you can tell in the noise in the background, very quiet here today. One thing of interest was last week's volume, though. If you look at uh, last week's volume on the NASDAQ and on the Dow compared to 1999, NASDAQ volume was up 78%, and the Dow volume was up 28%. And as I was saying, the last two years is known as for the uh, year tax and selling for the individual investor. So last week's volume was extremely high, and which was unusual. And to the extent that, you know, the old maxim is that uh, lack of volume exacerbates volatility, what could that mean for us for the rest of this week? Uh, volatility, I think, is the answer why we had so much volume last week. I mean, if you go back to March 10th highs, the NASDAQ is off 50% from its uh, March 10th highs. The SOX index, which is the semiconductor index, is off 55 percent, and the internet index is off 60 percent. I think you had a lot of in individuals involved in these stocks come the year end, they're looking at their portfolios, reviewing them, and deciding to uh, take their paper losses and uh, make them actual losses. That's why mm -hmm. we're seeing the volume so uh, heavy last week and so light this week. According to Merrill Lynch's technical uh, analyst, he feels the NASDAQ is actually greatly oversold and he is calling for a uh, snapback rally. If that's the case, usually what you see in that case scenario is you'll see a lift in the companies and the sectors that are down the most. Mm -hmm. uh, that being the case with the IIX, which is the internet index, down 60 plus percent off its highs, um, I would be looking for some sort of a bounce in the internet index. Talk to when me about the AOL Time Warner merger and its uh, potential effect on the market here. Actually, the merger was announced uh, January 10th, right. so we're actually almost 12 months uh, away from the when it was first announced. We actually are just waiting for the FCC approval, uh, which should be coming shortly, any day now, actually. Uh, Henry Blodgett, Merrill Lynch's internet, senior internet analyst, feels that not only uh, will it be approved by the FCC, um, and that should give positive momentum to the stock and also to the sector in general. All right, going to leave it there. AC, thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much, Ted. AC Morgan, senior trader of listed technology stocks. Getting a round of applause there from the trading floor at Merrill Lynch. All right, let's get you up to date on what's going on. A CNBC News update. Never at a loss, Amy Atkins. And uh, for a while, the Russians were at a loss, weren't they? Absolutely. Mir Space Station back in contact. That is contact. That is good news. Good morning, everybody. Russian officials say inexplicably dead batteries caused them to lose contact with the Russian space station Mir. They lost contact with the unmanned Mir for 20 hours due to batteries that inexplicably discharged. Those batteries are being recharged and should be at full capacity tomorrow. Back in this country, one of the president-elect's daughters, Jenna Bush, is in good condition at a Texas hospital following emergency surgery. The 19-year-old was rushed to the hospital for an appendectomy on Christmas Day. Jenna Bush is expected to join her family on vacation later this week. Bush left for Florida this morning. Several relatives, including his parents, will join him at a fishing spot north of Fort Myers. Bush will go to Washington on Thursday. He's expected to make more cabinet appointments this week. Ice and snowstorms in the Southern Plains are not letting up. In Oklahoma, at least three people have died from weather-related accidents. Tens of thou thousands are without power. Different sort of problem in Southern California. Strong winds are whipping up brush fires there. There is word that several large homes have narrowly escaped the flames. And that's news at 20 past the hour. So the Russians have to learn to say, which means, which means it keeps going and going, going and going. <laughs> Amy, we'll see you later. Sure. Amy Atkins. Got to change those batteries. When all is said and done, how will the holiday season end for e-tailers? We'll get one analyst's outlook next in taking the lead. This is Market Watch on CNBC. You don't want me to tell me that? Just buy them. All right. Excellent. Hello. You're killing me. Sell it. What are you, four years old? You're in the market, you've got to stay connected. <laughs> You see what Tanbrank Steel did. Oh, what do you got there? Email alert from Ameritrade. I tell them what stocks I want track. They tell me when things happen. On your cell phone? Or pager or PDA or computer. Uh, note to self, email alerts with Ameritrade. You get free research, too. Do you? Hmm? Well, he gets free research, too. I'll show you. Oh, please. Wait, it's only eight bucks to make a trade? Eight bucks? Cross five through 15. That's my role. Oh, it's me, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. You want to handle that stuff? No, I'm fine.
Open a cash account with $500 and get 25 internet equity trades commission free in the first month. Plus, two free round trip airline tickets when you purchase a seven night hotel stay. Restrictions apply. Go to Ameritrade.com. Ameritrade, it's how you get somewhere on Wall Street. What counts in a mutual fund? Performance counts. The Kaufman Fund is consistently delivered. 10 year, five year, one year. What counts in a mutual fund? Experience counts. Kaufman Fund managers Lawrence Soriana and Hans Such combine over 70 years of experience. Performance, experience, the Kaufman Fund finding outstanding investment values for the aggressive portion of your portfolio. Call now for your free prospectus. 800-679-7111. what the future of technology will bring, but we do know Corning will help bring it to you. On a road of pure light, the Global Optical Network, and at its center, Corning, discovering beyond imagination. Welcome back to Market Watch and taking the lead. Our topic today online sales. Christmas is gone, come and gone. The economy is slow. How did the e-tail business finish off? Our guest is Chuck Davis, president and CEO of bizrate.com. He joins us live from Los Angeles. Good morning. Thanks for getting up early out there. I know it's what only 8:23. Let, let's talk about this this season, which they they told us you know was over, supposed to be over on the 17th, I think, and then it kind of lagged on a little bit because people um, had to cut their shopping short if they wanted to get all of their deliveries guaranteed. Um, let's talk about total internet orders for starters. How did we do this year? Well, sales were not as big as everyone thought, but they were up almost 60 percent year over year. Uh, the season actually went l a lot longer than last year. The 18th was the peak day of the season, and the 20th to 23rd all saw at least a doubling of sales versus a year ago. A lot of that is because the merchants have worked out better fulfillment systems and one or two day delivery. I'm looking at your, uh, your research here. Now, you, you break out the difference between, in a performance comparison, total internet orders versus uh, total internet sales. That's uh, what can I glean from the difference here? Well, the total internet orders were up about 40 percent, and then uh, the price difference, mm -hmm. the price was up maybe another 13, 14 points this year, meaning an average purchase was around $112 instead of $99 last year. And when you put the two together, we were up about 58 percent. We still have two days left to count. We actually count on the 24th and 25th uh, to get the full Thanksgiving to Christmas effect. So total internet orders were up 42 percent, right? Uh, our total internet orders are up uh, in dollars 58 percent, in orders uh, around 40 percent. Uh, and uh, total internet sales up 61.7 percent in, in millions of dollars? Yes, in millions of dollars. And okay, and uh, the average purchase price you say was up about 13%. So, what's all the complaining about? I think the complaining is that people were expecting a bigger bump. We had forecasted an 81% jump for the holiday. So, to end in the 50, 60 uh, point range means there are going to be uh, disappointments. There were winners, there are losers, and there will be casualties. You know, going into the holiday season, we kept talking about how we would expect Internet sales to be up because of, among other things, gasoline prices. Well, they came down. Was that a factor, do you think, that uh, folks who uh, might not have gone out uh, when the gasoline was bumping $2 a gallon suddenly decided, oh, what the heck, and they went to the malls anyway? There was a lot of interference going on uh, from the presidential election uh, to, to just all the economic news coming out. But let's not be mistaken, online shopping is here to stay. This is a better way to shop, and getting a gain of 50, 60 percent is a large increase. Sure. Now, do we know which sites, uh, and, and I think it's important to differentiate the Amazons, for example, which, which sort of just do a lot for everybody, as opposed to the, uh, the store-specific sites, at Target.com, for example. Do, do we know how they did the individual retailers with their own web presence versus the, the, the biggies that, that'll let you shop from anywhere? through their site? Well, we saw two big trends. Uh, one was category-wise. We saw the home and garden and the toy category do uh, superbly uh, this season. And the second is we saw a flight to quality. 
A lot of that flight to quality was to brick and mortars, but some of the uh, better known brands in the pure plays also uh, had big pops. What's the anticipation going forward now, obviously? I mean, what's the next thing we look for in terms of uh, an opportunity for online sales? Is it Valentine's Day? Um, what can we keep our eyes glued to to see uh, how, how the web continues to be the conduit for shopping? Actually, today is the beginning of the post-Christmas sale season, and we might see some bigger, uh, some bigger sales than usual. Even the, online, that's interesting. Yeah, it's, it's, there should be a big pop now, and then there'll be Valentine's Day. So there should be a lot of deals on the web beginning now. Also, let's remember that a lot of computers are, are um, received on Christmas Day, so mm -hmm. a lot more uh, ISPs get turned on and, and folks log on to do their first purchase. Interesting. Good to have you. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Ted. Chuck Davis is president and CEO of bizrate.com, live on our LA Bureau. Coming up in the next half hour, a closer look at which stocks are moving the market this morning. Bob Pisani will have an update live from the exchange. That and more when Market Watch continues on CNBC. Hey, Great. You know, he's got a great track record. This is a major buying opportunity. Market news. Futures indicate a strong open. The market is oversold today. With that and there are more sellers than buyers. To stock the market today. It looks like this may be the moment. This market is back to the market. The market nervous today. Don't catch a falling knife. Because the market is just like this. When the journey is just as important as the destination, count on Chevy Impala. Now, make your money count with as low as 5.9% APR on the 2001 Impala. That's 966 in average finance savings. And with more overall room than Taurus, Camry, and Accord, getting there is just as enjoyable as being there. So, make your money count at your local Chevy dealer. We'll be there. 28 and a half past the hour. Here's what uh, the Dow has done thus far. Pretty much uh, all over the map. Double top there if you want to do real short-term technical analysis. 10,626. Back in a minute. What is CNBC? It's the charts, the lingo, the ticker, how to understand it all and profit every time you tune in. Part of our new Investor Day special. Are you getting the best possible execution of your online trade? <laughs> Unlike many other online brokers, Daytex proprietary technology routes your order automatically in an effort to get you the best available price. And it does it so quickly that if your online order is not executed within 60 seconds, the commission is waived. We also have Streamer with free streaming quotes so you can make investment decisions in real time. You can trade options. And with Daytech, any online equity trade is just $9.99. You can even trade before and after market hours. Think about it. Shouldn't you be with the one online broker that was built to trade? Fund your account and get 10 free online trades. To apply, call toll-free 1-877-58-DATEC or visit our special website.